Welcome to a lesson on evaluating functions using function notation. In example one, we're given that f of x equals x squared minus two x plus eleven. So we're given the formula for f of x, or the function rule, and because we have f of x here, we know that the input variable is x. So to determine f of negative three, we now know the input is negative three, so we substitute negative three for x, which means f of negative three is equal to, instead of x squared, we have negative three squared. Instead of minus two x, we have minus two times negative three plus eleven. So now we simplify the right side, and this will give us the function value or the output when the input is negative three. So following the order of operations, we would simplify the exponents first. Negative three squared is nine, so we have nine minus two times negative three plus eleven. Next we multiply, negative two times negative three is positive six, so we have nine plus six plus eleven, which is equal to twenty-six. So we found that f of negative three equals twenty-six, which means when the input is negative three, the output is twenty-six, or we can say the function value is twenty-six. If you were asked to write this information as an ordered pair, the ordered pair would be negative three comma twenty-six. Remember we always have the input as the first value, comma the output as the second value as an ordered pair. For part B we want to determine f of zero. So notice now the input is zero, so we substitute zero for x to determine the output or function value. So f of zero going to be equal to zero squared minus two times zero plus eleven. Simplifying, zero squared is zero, negative two times zero is zero, and then we have plus eleven. So f of zero equals eleven. So this tells us when the input is zero, the output is eleven, or the function value f of zero equals eleven. As an ordered pair, this should be the point zero comma eleven, which would be one point on our function if we graph the function. Example two, we have a different function. We have h of x equals two x minus five. Part a determine h of four. So the input is four, so we'll substitute four for x. So h of four equals two times four minus five. Simplifying two times four is eight, and eight minus five equals three. So we determined that the function value h of four equals three. So when the input is four, the output is three. This also represents the ordered pair four comma three. Now part b is a little bit different. It says for what value of x is h of x equal to seventeen? So notice here we're given the output or function value seventeen and asked to determine the input x. So to answer this question, we'll substitute seventeen for h of x and solve for x. So we would have seventeen equals two x minus five. And we add five to both sides. So this would be zero, so we have twenty-two equals two x. Divide both sides by two. Simplifying, we have x equals eleven. So to answer the question, for what value of x is h of x equal to seventeen, our answer is x equals eleven. What we discovered was that h of eleven equals seventeen, and as an ordered pair, this would be eleven comma seventeen. So I think it's important to make these connections. And then finally, we have g of x equals seventy-one, so notice again, the input variable is x. But notice how here the function value is not affected by x. The function g of x is always equal to the constant seventy-one. So regardless of the input, the function value is seventy-one. Which means, to determine g of five, there's not much to do. g of five equals seventy-one. Just to make the connection, the corresponding ordered pair would be five comma seventy-one. And for b, we have g of negative forty. Again, not much to do. g of negative forty 
also equals 71. This represents the ordered pair negative 40 comma 71. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.